but they're having kind of a spitting contest, and H&R Block, Block tried to sue into it for these uh, TV commercials. One is where they've got a, this woman is um, a retail clerk, and she's telling the customer, hi, Linda, or, you know, or whatever the name was, you, you, how you doing? And she says, do I know you? She says, I did your taxes last week. And then same one with the plumber, and then they were saying that, you know, these tax shops, they don't require people to have tax backgrounds. And so H&R Block got upset and sued them and then the, tried, to block the commercial, tried to block the commercials and, and H&R Block lost, which seems to me just really um, kind of broadcast the, the videos. I mean, I think they got a lot more airplay than they would have otherwise, you know. I hadn't heard about it. And then this other video I had, it was somebody I, I used to know, um, I was in his uh, marketing group a couple of years ago, and he did this video with this tax client that comes in with the shoe box, and it's just paper, and he's just dumping it on his desk, and finally, finally the guy just attacks him. You know? um, That's a funny video. If you get the link again, share it with Linda. I am sure she will appreciate it. Yeah, I'm sure I can find it. Well, there's, there's an ad on TV out. Oh, wait a minute. Am I on? Yeah, I guess I am. There's an ad on TV out here where there's a, a you know kind of a middle-aged man, uh, maybe 40, 50, and he's talking and and he says, I get a phone from this lady and she says, Well, I haven't done my taxes in a while, and he goes, Well, how long is a while? And she goes, Well, eight years. Yeah, that's that's a it's not I saw that one. <laughs> look on his face is like oh my god you know and, and he says well no problem no problem bring it in and I'll she says well I have everything in boxes and he says oh I've seen that before you know and so somebody they walk in with four big file boxes and he says but that's what we do we clean this up of course what he doesn't do is tell you that it costs ten thousand dollars <laughs> Yeah, I got a kick out of that. Okay, I'm going to send you the link right now. Um, okay. I'll put it in the... Uh, in the chat box? Yeah. <laughs> That's the music from Psycho. Okay, let's see here. All righty, here we go. Crazy CPA attacks client. Yeah, how you been? Good. <laughs> I'm quite proud of myself. Share your screen. We'll talk while you're doing that. I don't think that that um, it comes through when you actually look at the recording later. Look at it. Are you watching it, Linda? Funny. You have to almost be an accountant or a tax person to understand that. I have a client that does that to me every year, and this year I tried to be proactive and and talk to them in December. Please, can you give me <laughs> your information the beginning of January so I can have it all together and get your 1099s done for your subcontractors by the end of January? They gave it to me Friday of last week. That's not bad. Yeah. Has he uh, has a CPA attacked the client yet? <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> he's sitting there and he's oh, oh he just did. He just did. <laughs> oh <laughs> it says April thirteenth on the calendar. <laughs> Fire the bad clients. <laughs> He booted them out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I always enjoy, I always enjoyed that one. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. Oh boy. Oh, that's funny. No <laughs> bad clients were harmed in the production of this video. <laughs> Sound like the music from Psycho, I think that is. <laughs> oh wow. CPA Marketing Center, CMC. Yeah. I'm not sure if he's still doing that or not. Um, this was like about five years ago. I was a member of his group. Oh, cute. All right. 
Oh, there's the guy going crazy. <laughs> that's all right. Okay. Well, that's good. Let me now. The problem is I'm always afraid that if I closed. Oh, there you are. You're back. Very good. That is cute. Seth oh, is Seth here. David here? It says he joined us. Oh, what is he's coming in. He's here with this little and pup And he's got his little doggy Yeah. Maybe. If he doesn't have technical difficulties also. I don't know. <laughs> oh. So I kind of wanted to talk about QuickBooks and corruption issues that I have been Oh, doing. hey, I ran into a real interesting one today. Hi, Seth. Hi. Hi, Seth. We're going to be talking about QuickBooks and corruption. Yes. And what was your issue, Linda? This was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my whole life. I walked into my client's location, and she says, God, I need you to teach me how to create statements. She said, when I go to create statements, it tells me I don't have any customers. I said, oh, maybe that's because your customers are really jobs. <laughs> so I open it up. She's got a big, long list of customers, no jobs. And I said, that's odd. So I went up to the menu up at the top, customers, create statement. When I click on that, it says, you don't have any customers. And I'm looking at them. She's got at least 40 customers. I said, well, we got to check. Any time QuickBooks doesn't work right, it means the data's corrupt. Okay? So we got to fix it. So let's go to file utilities, um, check integrity, you know? And so we checked it. Everything's fine. So we went into the statements the other way from, um, from the front page, from the home page. We went to statements. And same thing, it said there are no customers. I said, you know what? Well, I should probably call QuickBooks. But I said, I'm going to try something. I'm going to rebuild the data even though it says it's fine. Okay? So I rebuilt the data even though it said it was fine. And you know what? After I rebuilt the, rebuilt the data, voila, there were the customers. It saw Magic them. And I said, you know what? It's like a sensor. I said, when you're you know, driving in your car, and you fill your gas tank up, you know your gas tank is filled up, but your sensor doesn't say you have gas, it says you're empty, the sensor's not working. So I said, whatever senses sensed that there were customers wasn't working. So after I rebuilt the data, then it could, and I said, whenever you're putting things in, deleting things, merging things, taking things out, you have a tendency to get corruption, so. Well, so I, I don't know, I think corruption's <laughs> happening a lot more than, than I've had two issues of corruption this week. Um, one, when I was upgrading a client that was on a network, um, and that's kind of difficult too because you never know if yeah. it's a network problem or if it's a database problem. Right. So they had several databases and I was able to do things in and open the other databases up in multi-user so I knew it wasn't the network it had to be this one particular database I actually went to um, I thought it was going to be a simple install you never know right I go in there and they tell me they have 30 databases oh. 30. <laughs> 30 databases to update and bring up. <laughs> and I always start with backing up. So, yeah. 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 yeah, 30 databases to back up. Well, the biggest database, I actually took and copied and pasted it, copied and pasted the QBW file, which I'm so totally glad that I did because I had to end up going back to that one, fix it in 2009, and then bring it up to yes. 2013. Right. Second instance of database corruption was on Mac. And I've been seeing so many Macs with corruption, I really thought it was just like a Mac 
QuickBooks problem. Uh, but yeah, I'm seeing it elsewhere. And Seth, you had a problem with corruption when you were doing your 10, track 1099 video. Yeah, I had a corrupt vendor. Not that the person was corrupt, just the... No, the, no, the name, the name on the list was corrupt. <laughs> I'm corrupt. <laughs> My wife tells me that all the time. <laughs> so, yeah, there apparently are big issues with uh, corruption all of a sudden. And I've heard other advisors, I think Nancy might have been one, that was saying that, you know, who else is having corruption issues? I was on a uh, webinar this morning with Joe, with Nan, Joe right. Woodard, and they had a listing of what causes corruption, how to minimize it. And he was saying that if you're... Um, it could be called zero. Yeah. said if you had, <laughs> if your file, for if your enterprise, if your Pro or Premier file was more than three or 400 um, meg, that it was susceptible to corruption, and if your enterprise file was about four, more than 750, it was susceptible. And um, also, the more links you had, like with uh, inventory and that kind of stuff, and he was saying you should um, resort your list quite often yes. to... Um, and to happening, right? do uh, a, doing a round trip on the file can get rid of some of the, you know, right. the what they call it, the data fragments. Either uh -huh. um, doing a, a defrag of the hard drive or doing a round trip of the file with, um, you know, can get rid of some of the file fragments. And they were all, we were also talking about the wireless networking too. Right, rather than the hardwire. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure that the problem just isn't that QuickBooks is getting that complicated because the people that I was dealing with, um, the Mac issue, um, they had no external links. They weren't doing payroll. They weren't doing um, inventory. They really didn't have, I mean, other than invoicing, receiving payments, and making deposits, and writing checks. They weren't even entering bills. They were really simple. Well, there's a colleague of mine. She's uh, an advanced pro advisor and an ISP. Her name is Gail Kersop. And she was saying that the real problem is is that even though they keep adding, you know, functionality and, and like, different, more list capacity and all that, still the file itself, you know, anything about, about above a gig, gig and a half, you're going to have problems. And so you making a sort of a finite file size more and more complicated, you know, that, I mean, it's basically an old database. It's about a 20-year-old database. Mm -hmm. And even when they dumped it into a SQL database, I think they just, I don't know how well, I don't know how normalized it is in terms of efficiency. I mean, it seemed like they just sort of dumped everything into a, was it the Sybase? I think that, I think Sybase is the, the SQL database they use. Well, aren't they not using SQL this year? Didn't they change? Well, they, it's a SQL database, but it's basically by Sybase is the company. It's not like say it's not like a Microsoft SQL Server or, or an Oracle database. It's the company is Sybase is where it's actually being housed. Okay. Well, it just drives me crazy because there are really no symptoms um, other than the reports are off for Mac. And, and I have seen that in at least three times where I'm looking at reports and I'm thinking, these numbers just really don't look right. Right. And, and you go into them and then they really start getting crazy. Crazy things start happening. They change, <laughs> which is odd to me, too. Yeah. Like you, <laughs> you'll be on the balance sheet and drill down and get one number, or go back to the balance sheet, drill down and get another number. Um, and, and if you're with a client and that happens, just how do you explain it? Oh, you got corrupt data, you know, and... Yeah, <laughs> yeah this is a great product except it corrupts your data. Right, right, right. 
Yeah, he's listening to that again. Uh oh, I'm gonna stop it. <laughs> it was Dennis this time. The monster is coming back. <laughs> Seth left us. There's just well, he's still here, now. but we can't see him. <laughs> we can see Ralphie. Wonderful little dog. Yeah, that's Ralphie. Well, you know, you know how I describe to my clients what happens when the data becomes corrupt. I wanted to try to think of a, a a situation where they could generalize that information over to QuickBooks. And I said, "Have you ever washed a couple loads of clothes, a load of socks, a load of underwear, and your dryer's bigger than your washer, so you put the two of them together in the dryer, so you've got a load of underwear and a load of socks, and usually you pull." the underwear and the socks out as they dry and so you don't have a problem but for some reason you have to go to the store and do something when you come back everything's all dry and if you take it out everything's all tangled together all the socks are tangled you got to pull them apart in the underwear and I said there's all these individual links that are underneath and get all tied together like that and that makes sense to them is that you guys? <laughs> Dennis is playing with his videos again. There we go. Yeah, I, I'm at a loss when I get to the client, and I guess that's about as good as an analogy as you can get. You know, um, most everybody's had that happen once. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, but you know. The whole reason I do QuickBooks is for the reports, and if you can't trust the reports... No, you're right. I, I, I'm confused. <laughs> That's right. And, and like I said earlier, what's the cure? Zero? How do you like zero? Um, I don't know enough about zero. I need a client that I can actually get down into the nitty-gritty with it. You know, you can beta test some things, and you can play around with the database, but until you're actually using, right. and and for zero, for me, it it is a different mindset. I want to get away from QuickBooks and thinking about registers. My way of dealing with QuickBooks is get the cache correct, and everything's in registers, so I immediately go to the registers. It's easy sure. to see whatever, I mean, on the balance sheet or any of the balance sheet items, you have a register. And yes. you've got both sides then, you can see exactly where it's at. So that's kind of how I work with QuickBooks. With zero, you don't have registers. So I have to change the way I think to work with zero. What's happening, Seth? No sound. No speaking. Okay. When Linda comes back, we'll talk a little bit about um, QuickBooks Online. Have you had any dealings with QuickBooks Online, Dennis? Have you done any? Um, not too much. I mean, I've, I've taken the test and all that, but... Um, the thing that I don't like about Intuit, it just seems like they've got all this old technology, but they're not really, and they keep adding stuff to it, but it just causes, it's, you know, it's not, I mean, they kind of got the uh, problem of a legacy database. And to me, this um, online database has been around for, what, 10 years now? And it just seems like, you kind of taking you know the pulling along the chain of the legacy database, you know. Right, right. I don't know what uh... Well, I do have to say that I do love the online banking and the automatic downloads. I really, really didn't think that I would, but the way that they have it set up and the way that you can check the accounts that it goes to is really great. But you don't have all of the features that you have with your regular QuickBooks. So, yeah, there's, yeah, there's an article by Charlie Russell, I guess, on this leader that 
I saw that. I love yeah. Charlie. Yeah, I, I um, haven't looked at the whole thing, but it, you know, it's, the only thing that has in common is the name QuickBooks, you know, it's like. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. But again, like I said, unless you do the deep dive and you really get into it, you really don't know. I was doing things like um, receiving payments and you don't have a credit button. If you want to make a credit, you have to actually go out of there. Hey, Bruce. <laughs> Unmute yourself. Yeah, yeah, I'm working on it. <laughs> How is Bruce? It's tax season. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Dennis has a wonderful um, video that you can watch. It's in the chat. I think you'll find it amusing. Give me a minute. Am I too loud now? No. No. Did you hear me talking about Mac and corruption issues I've been running into? On a Mac? On Macs. In QuickBooks, got to be in QuickBooks. In QuickBooks, yes. See chat. I don't see anything in chat. Okay. Let's bring back. Top Mr. Again. David. Hi. How'd you doing? What are you doing here? I got some new toys. Aren't you busy preparing people's tax returns? <laughs> <laughs> it's upside you didn't see down. A thing. You didn't see a thing. <laughs> I saw it. Who was it? It was John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. <laughs> is that you, Dennis, or is that you, Bruce, watching the video? We'll see when the guy... <laughs> we don't have any clients like that. I didn't wait till the last minute. Did you get that tax organizer filled out? Looked at it. Didn't need it. Everything is in order. <laughs> <laughs> Need the whole big shoe box. <laughs> Okay then. Right here. <laughs> Take your blocks to H&R Block. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Do you, you see a thing about the H&R Block and Pro, TurboTax getting in a spitting contest? Herbert lost. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you seen the videos? The, vi the the commercials? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like the plumber one. Yeah, I, I think it's funny that the jo judge told him to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but according to H&R Block, you're making light of people, hardworking Americans who have to work two jobs to sustain themselves. <laughs> yeah, especially the work for H&R Block. <laughs> Even if that's the point, is that the guy you want working on your taxes? The dude that's working two jobs? <laughs> How well, sharp is that man's mind? Tax. Do you want to do it yourself? How much experience? Listen, he can come and fix my plumbing while he does my taxes in one shot. <laughs> so you're you're for the plumber that does the taxes? You betcha. Either that or I want the electrician to do my taxes. Somebody. <laughs> I just want to be able to, you know, kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> While you're here, do my taxes. <laughs> yeah, come and fix my plumbing and do my taxes. Well, I knew this one guy. He was in my uh, uh, chamber of commerce. He uh, was a computer 
IT person, but he also did pet sitting. You know, so it's like, wow! Can you imagine that? I I guess I don't have a lot of room to talk as being a truck driver. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> but <laughs> wait a minute. I'll haul your load and I'll do your taxes. <laughs> During tax season, I didn't drive the truck. <laughs> well, that's what the uh, retail one was saying, that during tax season, she doesn't work in the retail. She does that in the holidays. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to figure out how to show everybody what I got. Would you see now that the IRS is shut Do down? Do we want to see it? <laughs> I got I got monitors that are ginormous. Oh, okay. And you said more than one. Monitors, <laughs> yes. Oh, nice, nice. What's you that? mean like the reptile? No, 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 no. Tell us the size. <laughs> they're uh, they're twenty four inch widescreen. Supersonic megapixel thingies. Nice. Sync Master 2494. Nice. They're awesome. <laughs> nice. You see where the IRS had to shut down their P10 site now, so you can't renew your P10 or get a new get a P10. That was, that was shut down when the court decision came about uh, last Friday. <laughs> I'm glad I renewed my pizza number a week before they shut it down. You know, it's like. Good. Well, my problem is, my problem is, I've got someone in here who I can have do small tax returns. I can't get her a pizza. <laughs> That's right. Oh. So she's can't do taxes. I <laughs> oh, they're messing everybody up this year. Yeah. So. I have a question. Now, I know you can do the returns. You just can't e-file them until the end of February. What, return? what What are you talking about? Any businesses that have, like, what was the You gave a number, but I looked at that list, and one of the things on the list was um, the depreciation, the depreciation schedule. Any business I know <laughs> uses that form. <laughs> I got an email today from my IRS representative here locally. It says that February 4th they were going to start authorizing businesses to start electronically filing. No, it not going to get any. Because <laughs> you can't file the forms that they need. Half the forms that people use are on the do not file list. <laughs> That's right. Well, so, so they're not going to be able to um, e-file them until the beginning of March, and then they're due March 15th? <laughs> Am I right? You are correct. So how does that work? Have a great weekend. You uh, get a tax preparer that because they're allowing us to uh, stockpile them this year. Oh my gosh! You're not in. You're technically we're not allowed to stockpile returns. Right. But this year, because of all of the forms that are all messed up, they want us to. They're letting us stockpile them. What does that mean exactly? Stockpile them. I get. I can get them all prepped and ready to go. I just can't transmit them. That's it. I thought Wednesday next Wednesday is the first day, isn't it? So you, I understand. So you're not allowed to do that. I mean, from what I've seen, I've seen yeah, lots of things. Technically, days. you're not allowed to do that. Correct. That's. And how are they ever going to know if? I guess if they see you processing a whole bunch at once, they're going to know you did that. Yep. But why? Who cares? That's stupid. Are they just trying to keep themselves from getting backed up? It, it, it's there. They 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 have this big fear that it's going to clog the system up. It probably will. <laughs> what but, else? No. But right, screw them. Right. Just the IRS. Who cares? That's you know, you right. got you got to unclog the system at the source, and <laughs> you got to get. That's some... why you need a plumber to do your tax returns. <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe they should just give us a year or two off from doing tax returns. Just it'll be free this year, no tax returns. <laughs> really? No, no, no. I got to have some tax income. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got to go feed my dog. Should I leave you guys online while I go feed them? Sure, if you'd like. Sure, why not? I promise not to say anything too bad about you. <laughs> Remember, it's all being recorded.
<laughs> oh, so you can go back to it anyway, see? <laughs> it should be as time. <laughs> so, Linda, there are forms right. that cannot be e-filed until the end of February, beginning of March. One of them oh, that, oh, okay. One of them being the depreciation form. Oh, okay. How many business do you know doesn't have assets? Well, there I, I might, there might be some businesses, Gina. There might be some businesses that are all depreciated out. <laughs> I am. My car was all depreciated out a year or two ago. So, uh, so you're saying you don't have anything depreciation, not even a Section 179? What is this? I don't do taxes. What's a Section 179? It, it, it say you bought a computer and you deducted it all the first year. Oh, I, yeah, all the first year. Yeah, everything. I always, I didn't buy, the last time I bought computers was three years ago this month. Hey, so. check out that uh, video I put in the chat, the TurboTax route. Oh, this one here, the bottom one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Dennis, that shouldn't you be working instead of watching all these videos? <laughs> <laughs> Dennis had too much fun today. Yeah. Yeah, that's all right. Tax yeah. wrapped by the accountants. Share this. <laughs> <laughs> See, you learn important stuff during these hangouts. So I just had someone walk in. I might be in trouble. Okay. Uh, my dinner's here. I gotta go. <laughs> okay. Well, enjoy dinner. <laughs> Have a good weekend, Bruce. Glad you could make it. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't get here sooner. <laughs> See you guys later. See you. Yep. Better Bye. late than never. <laughs> It's tax season. That's right. No, we, we didn't think we were going to see you at all. <laughs> so I really started talking about <laughs> QuickBooks Online. Ah, uh, yes. That's my issue this week. Um, I set up for QuickBooks Online inventory. Yes. And boy, is it different. I would not recommend QuickBooks Online Inventory for anybody that has over 50 items. Okay. It's very... Well, they didn't used to have it, so... Yeah, and I'm trying, to, I'm trying to, like, go with that, that it's all brand new and, and you know, all of that. But when you brought the um, desktop... Was that your glass slipper? No, I'm trying to... You can't really see it. It's an award I won last weekend at the... So i got to put it, something behind it. Ah, okay. I'm, less, I'm listening. I'm not interrupting. Well, tell us about your award. What did you get? My award is up, from Upside Thinking, Linda mm -hmm. Russell. I am the 2013 Upside Thinker of the Year Award. Hmm. Very nice. Congratulations. Yeah, there was there was two of us that got that award. And I we were both stunned. We didn't nice. What is that positive thinking or something? Good enough, you know. So uh and then she gave around I think four other awards too, like a really? legacy award and it was it was an excellent, excellent seminar. So what is it, positive my... thinking? Upside well, thinking. Positive thinking, is that what it was? The up thinking? No, it, 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 no, it's more, let's see, what, does she have it here? Uh, on our, she, hold on, it's right here. Um, let me see here. It's not really positive thing, thinking, because to me that, that's limiting. It's mm -hmm. more what they call upside thinking. Now let me see if I can find where she puts her little. Explanation of upside. Is the, this is 
this is the binder we got. Okay. And in the in the binder, it's basically leadership success summer. And you plan. You, we're not hearing you, Mike. Sorry. You plan like your your action plan for the year. You, it's basically you do a strategy session for the year. And I'm trying. She has oh, okay. motto, and I'm trying to find her motto, and I'm not. I'm not doing very well with this. You'd think I'd memorize it, huh? But it, it, she puts it on all her emails, and now it's not in, now I can't find it. Hello. Uh, but it basically is like, she's just saying, in any situation, you can choose to look at it hundreds of different ways, okay? So, and many times your initial reaction is something, you have a flat tire or something, your initial reaction is go, oh, darn, whatever. But you can choose to look at it from the upside. Mm. So it's a little different than positive thinking, okay? Mm. It's not just a, because positive thinking, I think, is limited in my mind, you know. So. Well, Linda, I have to say that you are an inspiration to me. I have heard, <laughs> wow. when you told me your story about working with the Windows 8 computer and, and <laughs> <laughs> I, I understand the frustration that you're going through, but you kept a positive attitude. Right. You kept working at the problem until you got it. And I was thinking of that when I was working on the QuickBooks online. Yes. You yes. know, you just have to work your way through it. Yeah, and I mean, at the end, you might decide, like you might decide, I'll never use inventory in QuickBooks online. But at least you know you tried it, and you discovered the limitations, and, and now you're making a choice. You're choosing wisely that, that, that it would be much more wise to use a PC for desktop, even if it was out on the cloud. Oh, mm -hmm. and I found a new, I've got a new client that actually, um, he has all these servers on the cloud that he has all kinds of software on. And I'm going to get his prices to find out about them because I'm helping him now to set up a personal data file. Oh, and okay. and uh, so he wants to track like his mortgage, his principal and interest. His grandparents have loaned him some money, which is an interest only loan. So, and we set up a completely separate personal data file rather than have it be part of his business file. Good. And, his business is computers, and he doesn't much like Windows 8 either. So he builds a lot of Windows 7 computers for people. <laughs> wow. What was interesting when I was working with him is that I noticed there was like a little bit of a lag time when I talked to him, and before like he got it, you know, he would respond like a second or two later. And so I asked him about that. I said, Kevin, I noticed that when I speak to you, it's like a second or two lag delay before you kind of respond to me. And he said, oh, yes, I'm very hard of hearing. So I do a lot of lip reading. I said, oh, well, that's good because I, my, I have lips that are easy to read. Which I, <laughs> Plus, I talk loud. So, and he said, yes, that's very good for him. So uh, I sometimes have trouble. I hear the sounds people say. But then taking those sounds and turning them into a word that means something, it sometimes takes a little, especially if they have a heavy accent. You know? So I was asking him if I had a heavy accent. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen that when people, when English is not the first language. Yes. When, yes. when they, you know, their native language is something else beside English. Right. Well, he obviously has always been hard of hearing because when he speaks, he speaks like someone who hasn't really heard well. Right. You know, you know how you some of the deaf people, the way they talk, mm -hmm. they, they're a little bit. They have a little bit of a deaf accent. Mm -hmm. So, but he he actually does pretty well, and we oh, get good. along. Good. So. Sounds like he has a lot going on. You should speak to Adrian, who does. Uh, he actually hosts has a hosting environment, a virtual That's right. Environment. They both do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they'd be good connections with each other because he's out here on the West Coast. Okay. So, 
Yeah. So was that all you wanted to tell us about the inventory and online that more than 50 items that kind of... Well, well there's a whole lot involved in it that, that's really not evident. I thought, they, wow. I thought they had a plug-in for that, or they had a third-party add-in that did inventory. Well, Stacy says something. Stacy Kildall talks yeah. about SOS inventory, yeah. yeah. but that's an add-on, and you have to pay for it. Right. Oh, yeah. So if you're paying for QuickBooks online, and you're paying $40, and then you got to pay another $40, it starts to add up. It does. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, so, and his his inventory was very, very simple. I thought we could do it, which I, I'm still working with it, and I still think we can. It's just different. It's a different mindset. It's a different way of doing things, and I don't have all the tools that I had before. There's right. a lot of setup, and that's why I say I would never do more than 50. When you it upload the file from desktop to the QBO, it brings in extra transactions, it brings in not only the inventory, but it creates items for um, inventory asset and cost of goods. Right. So, and, and I didn't realize, you know, that you really don't need them because if you leave it like that and you invoice, you see on the invoice the inventory, then the, the um, inventory asset and cost of goods item right there on the invoice. Oh, wow. Yeah, which is ugly. Uh, is this Zena? That's Zena. Hi, That's Zena. the warrior princess. Oh, look at her. She's beautiful. <laughs> and with your sweater, she looks like she has wings, Seth. The picture looks like she has wings. I know. She Yeah, she does. She can fly. <laughs> <laughs> cool. That was cute. The way his thing went, his sweater, it did make it look like she had wings. Yeah. His oh, angel God. dog. Yeah. <laughs> so who is the famous per one? Who is the person? Oh, it's Ted. Ted's here. Yes. But he oh, said, and he has no webcam. Okay. Right. Okay. His computer crashed, too. Everybody's having technical issues these days. Oh, wow. Hi, Lena. That's Ralphie. Ralphie? Oh, sorry. Oh, there's two of them. He's the famous one. Mm. Oh. What are they? What they're are they? Terrier, they're terrier mixes. Okay. They're pretty adorable. Yeah, they are. <laughs> there's one so, more somewhere. So the inventory comes over with these extra accounts. Okay. No cost and no amount. So I was okay with the no amounts because I put in the, the uh, balance sheet and the inventory number was there. I had to actually go in and delete those other accounts. Right. Then I went in and put in the amount. How many dogs, How many dogs do you have? Three. This is Hercules. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. Oh my god. Is he the oldest? Is he the oldest one? No, he's the youngest. <laughs> He's the youngest. He's a little baby. Oh. Hi, Shelly. What? Welcome. Very nice to see you. Seth is introducing us to his dogs. Yeah. Yes. Now you gotta go feed them. They're anxious. I'll be right back. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> See, I thought he brought them in after he had fed them. <laughs> Hi, Shelly. Hi, Shelly. How you doing? Get the phone. Shelly, you may be muted. Hi. There you go. Hey, Shelly. Yes. Yes. How are you doing? You're anxious. I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, okay. Is this your first hangout, Shelly? Have you tried the, the hangouts before? Hey, Dennis. How's it going? Good. I'll see you on, was it the fourth? Hi. Yeah. For the net for the uh, zero. This is the first time I figured out how to hit the button so I could join you. Oh, oh nice! It's just the first time I figured out how to hit the right button so I could join you. And we've been talking about zero. We're having a, a zero thing on. You might not be hearing us. For the net for the. Uh, 
first time I figured out how to hit the button. She's delayed. Okay. You know what? If you can hear us, maybe headphones might help. Um, I don't have a pair in front of me. <laughs> you have a pair, uh, a headset you can show her, Dennis, maybe? That might help. My headset's on the other, other in one. In the other room, mine are too. Okay. Yes. Yes. I have I have headphones, but I don't have my nice ones with the speakers. Mm. What if I? <laughs> yeah, it seems like you're a bit delayed for some reason. I know. I'm going to go out and go back in. Well, well, now it sounds good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, she's the leader of our group up here in the northwest. I'm happy to see her join us. Yeah. Yeah, I'm seeing her on uh, next Monday, next Tuesday. We're having a our meetup, and uh, Zero's going to be there. I'd love to be able to have a client with Zero. I've tried it. I have Zero. Um, one of the reps is going to contact me. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've been in contact with them, but before 1099s and W2s, I really didn't want to take on something until after I was done with that. Mm -hmm. So what is their rep? How do they work with accountants? Um, okay. Can you hear us, Shelly? The, uh, the question is about zero, how the zero reps work, the, work, work with accountants. I, I'm, yes. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. I, I'm not sure I under, understand the question. If you're an accountant and you have zero clients, you uh -huh. have a relationship with zero, kind of like we do with QuickBooks and Pro Advisors, how does zero work their advisors? Oh no, there's still a delay. If you're an accountant and you have zero clients. Okay. I'm not sure we'll get that answer today. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe we'll get it for next week. We have a lot of MIA peeps. That are feeding their dogs and and whatever, <laughs> no cam and delayed and all kinds of technical stuff today. Huh. I'm reading this one headline. It says two men try to carjack a Corvette at gunpoint, but can't make it go because it's a stick shift. <laughs> and they've got a quote from the owner says, "I had to tell them four different times to push in the clutch." My first thought was, I guess. We don't have a driver's ed in school anymore. My second thought was, don't shoot me because you can't start the car. <laughs> I'm trying to help you out here, you know. Thank you, they didn't shoot me. <laughs> well, while he's trying to figure it out, run, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Good time to run. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Just a thought. <laughs> okay, well... We are at the, I'd say top of the hour, but bottom of the hour. Yeah, I gotta take a nap before uh, taking my daughter to Toastmasters, and so I like to take a. I'm at the age now where I take naps in the afternoon to try to recharge the old batteries. Oh, okay. Oh, well, Shelly, are you back in? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm in or not. The delay's really bad. I'm in a place with really slow internet connection. Having a little latte in between clients. What are you on a iPad or something? Yeah, I'm, I'm out in the, kind of out in northeast Seattle in the boondocks a little bit. Oh, okay. Yeah, but you were asking about zero. Can Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Got it now. 
much of no, I, I don't know very much. And they're coming out on Tuesday to tell us. Um, are, they, are they paying for the pizza? What I do know is there is a certification program, um, and it's we're going to do it in a day uh, with uh, Pat. Is it Pat who's teaching it to us? I, know, I, um, I took it back in September. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to do it all in a day, and they're bringing in a teacher, and we're bringing in our laptops, and, and we're going to a, a hotel, basically. And um, it, it takes a day, and they've got two uh, webinars they want us to watch in advance, recorded webinars, so I, I'm assuming it's a lot of, it's actually pretty in-depth. One of our, a couple of our members have actually already done the certification. Um, and then after the certification, you know, they have to have the link on the website where you can find a local consultant. Um, I don't know if there's a monthly fee, or, I mean an annual renewal fee. It seems like I saw there was some kind of an annual renewal fee. Not so. Far. I don't know very much. That's why they're, you know, we're having them come out on Tuesday to tell us about it. Are they paying for the pizza? They are buying everybody uh, dinner and, um, yeah, drinks and... They did that on the East Coast. <laughs> well, they're out of San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. Well, if they ever yeah. decide they want to do it out east, I'd and they're sending. They're going to send um, Michelle on to our uh, boot camp in June to oh, nice. talk about zero again. It's always nice to see her. Yeah, she was doing a, a webinar with the zero about a, two weeks ago on that. Yeah, and you know what was really cool in the end of it, she was talking about how using zero would change the way you sort of run your business because you've got everybody on, all of your clients on one dashboard. You can sort of see how much money you're managing in the in the really big picture and uh, having everybody on one, all of your clients on one platform and they have this in this management tool that's built into it, then she's talking about really being able to make more money as a business by doing that. Well, you know Seth, he's a simply chair right here, but anyway, he had an interview uh, with uh, Ian. Ian, and it basically is on doing flat rate pricing with, or it was on uh, basically, you know, value billing, I guess, with zero, and it's like about an hour, you can do it on this guy. Sure, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, I won't call unless I call you first. Uh, I'm going to move. Thank you. Bye-bye. That's what's that's what's curious to me is how how to take this and now it's going to change my practice and the way I'm doing things and so how to how does that all how does that all work? Right, right. Yeah, so we're having outright and zero and Monchilla. Those are the ones that are confirmed on, in June and then uh, oh, for, the, for the blue camp, you mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to have them all sort of comparing their products and. Is Doug Sweeter coming back up or see? Yeah, I'm. I'm sure he'll be there. He's he's already got the date on his calendar. Um, we're just pulling together the sponsorship and, and such. Nice. Yeah. When is yeah. the boot camp, camp Shelley? It's June thirteenth. June thirteenth. Yep. In Seattle. In Seattle. Yeah. Beautiful location. Uh, yeah. So anyway, I'll know more about Zero and how they support accountants. I. Uh, after they come out on Tuesday, what what we're going to do is we have them coming out for this sort of free demo and Q and A kind of thing, and then we have them coming out a few weeks after that to certify us. Um, and then after we have a group of us that are certified, then we're going to start meeting and talking about building our practice uh, with zero. So we're going to sort of support each other and. Uh, back each other up as we sort of go through the changes, like bringing clients on to zero and what mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. A little bit of a support, a zero support group. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. I know that one of my QuickBooks people, Joyce Washington, is, is doing zero now. She is currently supporting zero, and she said being on the um, the advisor network on their site has really helped point people toward her and really given her a lot of uh, new clients. Yeah. So. It looks like, uh, I mean, it, it, it looks really solid in that they have us in mind when they built it. And I haven't seen anything else that really has sort of a dashboard of all your clients put together in that kind of way. 
this QB, QBO doesn't have that, do they? Well, you yeah. can you know you can get to all of your clients, but it doesn't like tell you anything about them from one window. I think the closest thing they have is that income bar that they have, uh, and and I'm not really so thrilled with that. <laughs> I mean, I've looked at it, but it really doesn't do that much for me. <laughs> So it'll be interesting to see zero, and it'll be interesting. So, Dennis, next week, will you be back on and tell us? Uh, yeah. Right. Well, hopefully, Shelly will be able to join us. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to. This is a this is a good time, uh, a good time of the week for me. Oh, good. And it looks like I kind of need to jump off now. I'm going to go run over and help somebody that's stuck on their bank reconciliation. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you, Gina, and thank you, Linda and Dennis. Thank you for showing up, and we'll see you next week then. Okay, bye. Take care. Bye. Okay, I think we are at the bottom of the hour, and yeah, time to go. sign off for the week. And uh, I'm looking forward to hearing about zero next week. Okay, see you next week. Okay, take care, everyone. Goodbye. Bye -bye.